Hello you Armoured Fanatics, you it's Mattimus here with you today. Thank you so much for joining me on this video. I really do appreciate you stopping by and watching these review videos. Uh, with that being said, if you do wish to be notified of any more upcoming videos, whether it be gaming or military, please feel free to hit that bell in the subscribe button area and to, to be notified by anything coming up in the near future and you'll actually be able to get a uh, heads up of what's uh, coming up from my channel here. So feel free to hit that bell button. So, what are we looking at today? Well, it's not artillery, it's not tanks, it is the infantry fighting vehicle, and what an impressive one it is. Once again, this is another vehicle that has blindsided me completely, because I always get confused between the Puma and the Lynx. Yes, the Lynx vehicle is a very similar kind of concept to the Puma, uh, however, the concepts are a tiny bit different, not, not majorly, and uh, as always, we're going to go over a bit of an overview of the vehicle, some specifications, some technical details, a few things that you may not know before, and then overall my opinion on this vehicle. So let's get started. Okay, so first of all, let's just alleviate my own personal confusion with the two variants of vehicles that we have here, both the Lynx and the Puma. So the German firm Rheinmetall produces the new German Puma IFV infantry fighting vehicle for the German army, and some export customers have privately developed without government support as with the Puma, the similar Lynx vehicle. What makes the Lynx different is a more flexible design that can appeal to a wider number of export customers. All the features of the Puma are much more besides available for the Lynx. Unlike the Puma, the Lynx is available in two chassis sizes. The smaller KF-31 can carry three crew and six passengers, while the KF-41 has a more powerful engine and carries an eight passenger. Each of these vehicles has a turret that can be equipped with a 30mm or 35mm autocannon, plus a 7.62mm machine gun or 5.56mm machine gun. The idea behind the Lynx was that the popularity of the Puma, along with its German units, would not always translate to many foreign customers. The first 350 Pumas were delivered to the German army in 2015, and all of them should be arriving around 2020. Puma replaces the 2000 Cold War era 1970s and very impressive Marta IFVs, which have served very, very well for their time. Ironically, the Puma contains a lot of innovations and improvements, many of them suggested by Marta users. Many of the military analysts from the German military have cited that the Marta is a fantastic vehicle, but needed to be replaced for future development. Germany is well known for developing high quality vehicles, whether it's civilian or military. The latest range of armoured vehicles further reinforces this statement with the Puma. The Puma has been designated to gradually replace the Marder IFE instead of completely overhauling and switching out fleets. The Puma is the most protected IFE currently available as to NATO standards. It has a welded armour hull with add on modular armour packages and has an option of three various protection levels to suit operational needs. The weight of the vehicle can vary from 29.4 to 43 tons according to specific protection levels. The base model has a front and flank protection against 30mm rounds, while the vehicle has all round protection against 14.5mm machine gun fire. The most protected variant can be considered as a heavy IFV. Additional armour modules can be fitted, increasing Puma's weight to 43 tons total. Furthermore, in this configuration, it is even heavier than the T-72 main battle tank in its most basic configuration. It seems that the most protected variant of the Puma withstands 120 and 125mm projectiles over the front arc, which is stated, but I'm not too sure how specifically accurate that is. It seems as though the Germans have settled on the 31.5 ton version as their standard. This one gives all round protection from the 14.5mm guns and some protection from 30mm rounds. The vehicle and its armour is entirely coated with a special IR suppressing paint which reduces its thermal signature and makes it a lot more difficult for hostile missiles to target it. The bottom and sides of the IFE are protected from mine and IED blasts from up to 10kg of explosives. The crew compartment is air conditioned, MBC protected and has a fire suppression system which uses non-toxic agents. The engine compartment is provided with its own fire extinguishing system for additional safety. The Puma is fitted with a 30mm cannon which can fire computer controlled shells that will detonate inside buildings or over the top of troops taking cover behind a wall or a trench and such. The 30mm cannon can fire up to 200 rounds a minute and has a range of 3000 meters. The vehicle carries up to 400 rounds of 30mm ammo and over 2000 rounds for its 7.62mm machine gun or additionally it can be fitted with a 5.56mm machine gun. 
This is an unusual calibre for the weapon to be using, mounted as a popular choice normally as 7.62mm, but the Germans went ahead with the 5.56 as it was smaller and allowed for a large number of rounds to be carried on board, around 2000. This gun is used to engage soft targets up to 1000 meters range and anything further that will be engaged by the 30mm automatic cannon. Other optional weapons include a guided missile launcher or an automatic grenade launcher. The 30mm gun also has an armoured piercing round that is also very effective against personnel. The FAPIDS T or Frangible Armoured Piercing Incendiary Discarding Sabo Tracer. I can tell you this much, if I was infantry I really would not want that particular kind of named round coming towards me or my position, that's just me. But really though it seems like a very impressive round and kind of multi-purpose which is really interesting to hear. And finally, the vehicle has six 76mm smoke grenade launchers mounted on each side of the turret, which can also be capable of being brought up to eight to the rear of the turret. Now this is something I'm going to be doing a video on in the future guides, but it always surprises me with these new vehicles, how they are not producing more smoke discharges being available to these crews on the vehicle. I honestly think six to eight discharges is not enough, and there needs to be more capability to produce more smoke, and without the, you know, the disadvantage of having to reload these systems once they're fired once or twice. Something I'm going to touch base on in the future, so look forward to that video. The up-armoured turret provides extensive protection for the gun barrels. The 30mm gun barrel is completely enclosed in a metal casing, which has a series of small openings for air cooling of the barrel. The 5.56mm machine gun disappears from view and the armour casing covers it entirely, leaving a tiny little exit hole for the gun barrel. This ensures the weapons are not damaged by hostile small arms fire or grenade fragments, or even potentially artillery fragments. The weapon targeting is done by a sophisticated sighting system which is included of a mix of optical, IR and night vision sensors. This package is placed next to the 30mm gun and is protected by a sliding armour panel which is vital as small arms fire and shrapnel can damage these more sensitive instruments and blind the gunner and potentially the commander. As mentioned before, this vehicle is capable of being mounted up with an anti-tank guided weapon system. There is a provision to mount the Israeli Spike anti-tank missile on the side of the turret as a pack of four. This, along with the 30mm gun firing its armoured piercing rounds, can in turn turn the Puma into quite the potent anti-tank platform which can protect its disembarked troops from an enemy armoured contact without having to rely on such external fire supports such as main battle tanks. Cameras are all over this damn thing, that's literally how this vehicle was designed. As marked in the photos for the design and from the company Rheinmetall, the Puma has a minimum of six cameras of varying sizes and magnifications, which provide 360 degree coverage of its surroundings without having to pop patches or disembark. The commander has his own camera mast which contains a variety of sensors like the IR and night vision devices to augment his camera. The gunner has his own camera unit with similar features right next to the guns. The best part is that all these cameras are protected by their own individual sliding armour panels, which is very, very unique. The driver too gets his own set of cameras and are a little smaller than the others and are located around the turret for all round visibility whilst driving. That means no more commander going left right stick on top of the turret looking behind him. The gunner can use the commander's camera unit to aim his guns if his cameras are damaged and the driver can do the same. A large number of sensors thus ensures the redundancy which is very important on the battlefield scenario. The armour of the Puma has been designed keeping modularity and flexibility in mind. The modular nature of the AMAP or Advanced Modular Arm Protection Composite allows the armour to be configured based on various threat levels. The Puma has a crew of three, commander, gunner and driver and carries up to eight infantrymen or cargo in the rear troop compartment. The Puma is also very digital, noting the success the US Army has had with equipping their armoured vehicles with a battlefield internet communications equipment, the Germans did the same with the Puma. The Puma will be driven by a very ambitious new development. The so called 10 cylinder HPT or high power density engine will be able to be variant up to 890 to 1008 horsepower engines and is distinguished by its very small size and reduced weight but at the same time giving this vehicle enormous performance power. The Puma has been designed in such a way that there are a lot of options for future upgrades, which nowadays is always going to be key when it comes to making these kind of vehicles. There are provisions to mount a hard kill active protection system to defeat hostile anti-tank guided missiles or RPGs. The German military will eventually acquire around the 400 Pumas it originally asked for. 
Since they have performed well in the cold trials, Canada is even considering the Puma to complement its fleet of Leopard 2 tanks. With further upgrades in the future, the Puma will easily remain one of the best infantry fighting vehicles on the market today. So, what do I think of this vehicle? Honestly guys, I must say this is probably going to top one of my favourite IFVs out on the market. I used to absolutely love the CV90 and I still do and you all know I'm a massive fan of the Warrior Infantry Fighting Vehicle. However, this vehicle is technologically robust. I mean, this thing is pumped full of technology. Now some people may side with the fact that they don't like technology. They'd rather the vehicle be a lot more primitive and back to its old standards of just being using the old kind of systems that don't break down as much, don't require as much technological maintenance and such. However guys, it's just the way that the military is going now to try and keep up to date with all this different technology cameras, sensors, IR, all these sort of things going on that are very important to help you on the battlefield. I mean, commanders want as much of these kind of capabilities as possible and if they can place them into these new vehicles, they're going to request for it. It seems like this thing is packed to the nines with so much tech that it is a little concerning that if some parts of it do fail, what are they going to do next? Let's say, for instance, this particular scene that we're looking at right now. The vehicle has a manless turret, which means the turret basket is not really required anymore. The commander and the gunner can sit inside the hull, which is absolutely fantastic because A, it protects the crew a lot more, being that the crew can be a more, com you know, controlled compartment for armor, and B, it allows for a lot more room for, say, ammunition uh, and all that good stuff. With that being said though, if all these sensors fail, cameras and all that good stuff, it's going to be very difficult to be able to utilize that main gun correctly and being able to command and control your vehicle on the battlefield. Trust me, I know how difficult it can be with just hatch closed in an infantry fighting vehicle such as the Warrior. Putting this thing into the battlefield with sensors that are all busted up, it's going to be very difficult for those crew to be able to operate this vehicle. So yes, I do love the fact that this thing has such a plethora of, you know, information technology and, and all the different sensors that's available to it. But it does create some serious risk as to, well, what if all these systems are starting to fail? We all know how computers work. Sometimes they just fart out and just don't want to do what we ask them to do. And I just hope that's not going to be the case with some of these modern day systems coming out nowadays. Because you've got to remember guys, this is untested waters for the most part. Most of the systems that we're placing into these vehicles have not been fully tested in combat environments. Yes, they're going through the trial phases right now and working probably very, very nicely. But there's definitely going to be some room for improvement, I'm sure, on these particular kind of systems. Because they're computers. Computers don't like working so good. Cameras like getting covered in dust etc etc etc. It's just something to think about when we look at these modern day vehicles. Another thing that really sets this vehicle apart is its modular armor packaging. I love the fact that it can be uprated or downrated to the specific environment that it's going into. And again, this is very common with most tanks and vehicles that are coming out today. They're being given the options of doing particular kind of things. And in this case for armor, it's nice that it has different packages for available for its scenario. For instance, if you can reduce the vehicle's overall weight by five or six tons, then why would you not want to do that? It's a fantastic capability for the commander to be able to utilize or any kind of battlefield command for this battle group of vehicles that are going out. Well, I don't need to waste, you know, time putting on this extra armor if I'm going into an environment that really doesn't quite require it. And that is fantastic. And it's not only going to do uh, a lot of help for uh, the vehicle and, and the crew, it's also going to do a fantastic thing for finances for the government that are producing these vehicles because they don't need to produce a standard armor set that is set out bog standard for all vehicles. They can kind of negotiate different kind of battle groups for different kind of roles, which is really, really interesting. Um, I do like the remote control turret, but as I mentioned before, it does bring up a few concerns. Um, clearly, the weapon system that this vehicle is using has some really interesting features. For instance, the air burst munition, which is basically a shotgun overhead onto troops in cover. Very, very important, I think, in today's uh, advanced technology for engaging targets from long distance from main armaments. And I think that's going to be applicable for most vehicles coming out today. It's, it's a very common feature. Also very handy for knocking out helicopters, which is really, really cool. Um, so yeah, guys, overall, this thing is 
really, really impressive, and I can't wait to see more of it in the future. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Please leave me a like if you enjoyed it, and some sort of comment to let me know what you think of this vehicle. And if you are new to my channel, please subscribe. And once again, if you are a subscriber, if you do want to be notified of any videos coming up in the future, please hit that little bell button, and you should be able to be notified of what's coming up next.